Now my next guest is helping brides preserve a special part of their wedding day forever, the bouquet. Daphne Anderson is the founder of Van Cootery, which specializes in bridal bouquet preservation, utilizing traditional Japanese flower pressing techniques. And she joins me now to tell me what this is all about. Well, thank you so much for having us. I'm really excited. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This looks like art, something I want to literally have hanging up. Up. So for someone that's never heard of Van Couterie, what is it? So I'll just give you the nutshell version of how Van Couterie came to be. So my background is in forensic nursing wow. and my husband is an engineer. And during the pandemic, we both kind of had a moment where we're like, do we want to do these jobs forever? And I had an unfortunate event where my brother was died unexpectedly oh, and my so my husband who I told you was an engineer made me a flower press thinking that this would help you know kind of bring me out of lift my lift my spirits so to speak but what happened was is it blew up our whole lives and I haven't stopped pressing flowers since and so we decided last year that we would focus entirely on this business and see where it would take us and so we've tripled our sales over this past year. Oh my gosh, look at you go. But the biggest issue that we find is just like you, you're like, what is flower preservation? What do we do? How do I take this object and turn it into something that's flat as a piece of paper? Right. And so I'm just gonna kind of quickly walk you guys through that process just to give you an idea and yes. feel free to jump in with some questions. I definitely will, because I was thinking, you know, you think drying flowers and you think the typical hang it on a wall, like maybe you did when you were younger when someone gives you some flowers for homecoming or something. <laughs> and I did not realize that this, it's so intricate. So Thank please you so much. show us what what do we do so usually like a bouquet just arrives to me so there's like 40 or 50 flowers but let's just make it easy and start out with one so a pretty sunflower from my garden oh. and one of the things with traditional Japanese pressing is I deconstruct the flower and that means that I take it apart petal by petal and I'm gonna have you give a shot Continue. at it just to see okay. what it feels like. Nice and delicate. And the reason why we do this is that when we form the flowers back together, or the technical term is called building the flower, is that they resemble more of a true shape than if they're pressed whole. It also, um, when you press something whole, it also degrades the flower a little bit. And when we're able to press and deconstruct fully like you're doing, it leads to a higher quality product with less color draining and better petal formation that you would see here. Like this is a parrot tulip. And so what I'm gonna show you guys now, great job by the Think way. This is like put on some music Definitely. and do this. Like, and a little glass of wine's okay yeah, too. Yeah, okay, yes. <laughs> Um, so imagine doing that with 50 flowers, like just how long that process right. took. So this is what it looks like after it's been drying for about six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah, and so they do start to lose their color, but this is the original petal, and then this is what they look like when they've been pressed. And they still, like you said, have all of like the design and all yeah, of the elements. Like the variegations preserved. are still there. Yes. Now this is just a traditional yellow sunflower, but you can see how well the color has stayed and has not moved. And then this piece over here, this flower is actually this one right here. This whole yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're even doing the middle we here. Are. Wow. Yeah, we're doing the middles too. Oh my goodness. And so I would say probably on average to reconstruct something like this would probably take me about five minutes. Just one. So one flower would take you five minutes. Mm -hmm. Just to put it back together. Now, deconstructing it, which is what this process is. Deconstruction takes a little bit longer just because you have to be a little bit more careful with the flowers in yes. the beginning. But after they've been dried, flowers are very forgiving. You can cut them, you can color them, but the most important part for us in the process is pressing. And so that's why we always encourage brides to try and get their flowers to us as soon as possible. I just got a message this morning from a woman who said, oh, I got married two weeks ago, they're in my garage drying. We don't want that. We want them beautiful and fresh, fresh. and okay. because the fresher they are, the better they press. And then you have color retention like this 
that translates over to something like this or that for the bride or anybody to have, you know, hanging in their home. And you had asked about, could you have that as a piece of art? We do this for people who just are interested in having artwork in their home that like flowers but aren't necessarily um, having a wedding. Or I hear a lot, I wish I would have done this for my wedding, and then people will get it recreated, there and then you go. it's like a nice Christmas present for somebody. It would be such a nice gift, and your Instagram shows so many of these beautiful techniques and examples Thank that we're you. seeing now. Thank you. I mean, stunning if people want to get ideas as well as what to you know preserve themselves if maybe they're they already got married <laughs> and they want to figure out, well, hey, what can I do or have a piece of art. Um, and walk me through, you said it's the most important with the pressing aspect. So what are you using to press? Okay, great question. So we use paper. This is copy paper. Oh, and it. we take our copy paper and we donate it to a Montessori school after we're done. So we are trying to embrace sustainable practices. There are some things we can't avoid like when I glue the flowers together, I have to use glue. That's not necessarily the most sustainable thing. Um, the other thing we do um, is that we work with small women flower farmers because many times I have to source replacement petals. As I would mentioned, sometimes bouquets come in and they're a little unsad and happy. So I have to replace those. So I've made all these relationships with pesticide-free, organic flower farmers ran by women. So we're really trying to keep um, this very local, very business oriented towards women, small business owners, and I think we're on our way. I think you absolutely <laughs> are as well. Why do you think this became so popular? Because people just want to preserve a special moment in their lives? People tell me that they just, they want something meaningful, but they don't really know how to capture it. I think that a photograph captures something in a meaningful way for many different people, but this is very private. Like, this couple chose these flowers together, and now this couple will have this bouquet with them forever. And it will change a little bit. The colors will flayed, the flowers will be a little bit more crepey. So it's kind of like your marriage. Like, you know, as you grow into your marriage, things change, mm -hmm. things look a little bit different. But in the end, you still have an original piece of your wedding, and outside of maybe your wedding dress or your photographs, you don't really have anything left. So this is something that we are trying to teach brides that, you know, this is something that would be with you forever, just like your photographs, so. Wow, this <laughs> was so amazing, and I can't wait to have something like this someday. So thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you for being here. And thank you to all of you for spending time with us today. You can check our website for more of our content, and you can always send us an email to share your thoughts. So don't forget to enjoy your new day, and we'll see you next time.